Good morning everybody it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Today we are going to be making candles because I'm running out fast and in here everything has changed around a little bit so you'll be able to see I'm on a different bench. So what I've done at the moment is I've designated one area to candles, one area to soap and one area for my main YouTube. Uh, so hopefully you like the setup. I will bring you a bit of a video later on on my setup because there's definitely more room and um, the normal setup that you see of you know the big wall at the back I actually needed two walls because I just didn't have enough space for what I'm going to do and I thought I need to get super professional for 2023 so I'm trying my best to do what I can so anyway let's uh, flip the camera around so you can see what I'm doing I'm going to give you the um, temperatures in my candles in both Fahrenheit and in Celsius because in Australia we use Celsius but a lot of my subscribers are from the US so anyway like I said let's turn this around and get this show on the road so here we are today everybody this is my different setup for the moment I have my massive doors open so if you can hear the wind it is because of that um, and making candles it is good to try and have some windows or something open because as we know fragrances are super duper strong but anyway for today you can see I've already made some these are my um, French pear they sell so crazy every time I do anything in French pear I will be bringing out a soap as well but that's for a later time so and now like I said um, I do use this infrared thermometer now if you're going to buy one 100% I do suggest you buy one of these um, it's about 30 40 dollars from your cake shop you can get them from cake shops or Amazon but honestly so much better than anything else and it makes your life easy and it will last a long time I've had it for a long time so now I do have a few candles here that I've already um, put the little uh, tabs on so we're going to just move some of these I guess out the way just so you can see what I'm up to and I'm going to be doing a one kilo mix so I usually do these you know via gram if you want to use ounces there's plenty of calculators online just to um do that but look honestly I know a lot of US people tell me that they actually use grams because it is more precise so if you're going to do that I definitely suggest that now I will turn the camera around when we're adding the fragrance because it is on the scale now something I do is everything is on the scale for me it's super important to weigh everything I mean you can't just get one like this and just pour it in and hope it's the right um, measurement you really do need to make sure especially if you're selling these so I definitely suggest if you're selling please make sure um, you know that you're doing these the right way and you're weighing them so that you know because in Australia it's very strict you know we must um, adhere to everything here in Australia so that's something that I thought uh, I'll just tell you that so now today I'm going to wick it now I'll tell you what I'm using so these are your tiny little bubsy jars and they will fill about a hundred grams of wax and that's quite close to the top um, the um, wicks that I'm using for these ones because these are my amber jars now I don't usually use these for candles the only reason I'm using them is I have hundreds of them and I wanted to get rid of them so from pure candle supplies this is what it is it's called a PT 65 now do remember that sometimes candle companies or suppliers they will rename wicks to their own specifications so even though I'm saying PT65 another company might give it a different name so you have to be a bit cautious so anyway that's for that so I've already wicked this one here and all you need is some stickers now if you're in Australia and you use pure candle supplies I have to tell you these are the best wick stickers I've ever used I buy them on massive rolls I'm almost done with this roll but honestly they stick so well compared to your normal ones so I'm going to give you one these are just from a normal supplier um, and you know just a, an average supplier that's a big bulk supplier and they're just not very good they just come off honestly uh, but these big ones I definitely suggest these if you're going to use one 
Now today we are using um, the Pure Candle Supplies Wax. So it's a cocoa soy and coconut soy is definitely different burning than soy. So please do remember that and you, can, and you won't be using the same wick if you're using soy because um, coconut soy actually burns slower which gives people a little bit longer burn for a candle. Um, that's one reason why I like it and I've just got used to using it but it does take a lot of testing to get used to using this but anyway so now we're going to um, you know fix all of our fragrance in a minute organize this as you can see I've already put the stickers on we do need to put the legal stickers on of course and remember they are you know you can get these from any supplier. It basically just tells them about the burn. Just put them on the bottom. It's super important that they're on every single candle. No matter whether you give it away to a friend or not, you still need to put it on there. Um, so please don't forget that, everyone. Now, I'm going to keep them white. We're not going to colour. But we are going to do a bit of a fun Christmas one in a minute. So I do have this little mould, um, if you can see this. I got this from Sud Off. And I'm going to make a little brown gingerbread kind of one. And it's a very thin one, so I'm not sure if it's going to work. But we're going to try and put the gingerbread man on the top of these ones. So um, I'm going to just see how, you know, how good we can get this one to look. So this one, usually these are going to be, these ones here will be 210 grams. But I'm only going to do it 200 in the wax because uh, one of these will weigh about 10 grams and I did actually do a test one and uh, weigh it so that I would know the the right amount now I'm sorry you can hear the plane going over usually we don't actually have planes here but for some silly reason um, we seem to be like the tourist destination going over us now but I know there's an airport not too far and you can see in the background this is one of my candles I am testing which is also the um, amber jar and I'm just double chesting um, the wick so I'm going to show you that in a minute and this has only been going about 15 minutes so now so let's turn the camera around and I'm going to pour all the fragrances in and show you what I'm up to at the moment so let's get on to that bit so here on my scale we do have um, you know the jug here so in here we're going to be making remember one kilo which is 1000 grams so when you actually do this and I'm going to be working on a 9% fragrance load that's generally what I use and so what you're going to do is we have got 910 grams of wax in here it's really important that you don't go to 1000 because if you put 1000 grams in there plus the fragrance then the 9% is not there so generally um, you know it's a 9% so obviously 9% is fragrance and the extra you know um, what is it 91% would be you know the wax so anyway in here like I said we have 910 grams of wax and now it is at around the um, uh, 50 degrees uh, Celsius so 50 degrees Celsius is what we want to pour um, uh, fragrance oil in so now when we're talking about that that would be 122 um, Fahrenheit because I have written all this down so that I could tell everyone so now I'm going to tear out my scale let's just tear this out um, make sure it's been good uh, okay so it's ready now so now like I said I'm going to use mostly vanilla in this but then I do have a little spice so I'm going to use one which is this one here called very vanilla this is my favorite vanilla it is from um, who is this one from aroma that's right I couldn't remember then so now let's just add this in so I'm going to be adding because we want 90 grams remember so in here I'm going to be doing around 75 of the vanilla because this is high in vanilla so now we've got that in there and now I dropped the lid but that's okay we'll pick that up in a minute and now the rest of it we are going to add this now I'll show you what it is this um, I think this was from luxury candle supplies now honestly on its own it's not a very nice one on its own it's it's really strong it's too overbearing but with um, vanilla it's beautiful it's really nice so sometimes you know if you get one you think oh no I don't like it just remember you can mix it with something else just to come up with the scent that you want so there we go we've got the right amount in there 
and remember too that these are very very strong like all of these um fragrance oils are super duper strong so if you put them on some surfaces it will actually eat a plastic surface and i actually found that out because i put some contact on my shelves to make it look nice and it started bubbling so it literally ate the shelf which wasn't very good at all so now i've just got a chopstick and we're just going to mix this up now um, something else that you can do before this stage or with this stage is you can add something like this um, it, you, it, this is a uv stabilizer and what it does is it just helps a tiny bit you know and you're only going to add like i think it's 0.1 percent or something so it's a, like honestly it's the tiniest little thing it would last you so long um, and it just helps a little bit with um you know the discoloration that yellowy kind of look that you get around you do need to make sure you mix it in so we'll just mix it because i can see it on the edge and you know when you're doing these candles always try and mix them you know just for a couple minutes because what's actually happening is this fragrance needs to um, attach itself to the molecules of the wax and i know it sounds scientific which it kind of is really but um, if it doesn't do that, you know, it, it's just not going to smell good. You won't get the scent and you'll get the oil just releasing to the top. Uh, so, and there's a few reasons why oil will come to the top. Sometimes it means you've actually just added too much. Uh, so always make sure you're not adding too much. And, you know, if you go to an 8% or a 9% fragrance load, it's actually good because if you make a mistake and put a little bit too much in, it's not going to matter as much because you have that little leeway. It's kind of like a super fat in um, soap. You know, you've just got that little leeway if you make a mistake. Uh, whereas, you know, if you don't have that and you go to the full 10% and you add 11%, well, then it's some of that oil is going to come to the top of your candle and it's useless. You can't use it because that means it's just too dangerous to actually use. So hopefully that makes sense because a lot of people ask me, you know, why is that important? And there are a lot of things that are important to it. Now, I've just tested it with my infrared and it's saying it's 48 degrees. So we don't want it to be that. Um, and this particular coconut soy likes to be poured at a really, really low temperature. It almost looks cloudy when we actually pour it so you know for those people that are new to candle making please don't think that you know you just get to make a candle and it works perfect because honestly it doesn't sometimes it just doesn't work like that so it's really important just to um understand that this is a science it does take time uh, to understand how to do it so just take your time um and learning a little bit so we'll just go over what i said so like i said um you know we're going to heat this to around about your 70 degrees which is 158 fahrenheit that's how much you need to um, heat this particular wax and then when we add the fragrance we're adding it at 50 degrees celsius or 122 fahrenheit so now when we pour it i found the best you know the golden um perfect kind of uh, pouring temperature for me is 43 degrees which is 109 Fahrenheit and the reason for this is it actually helps the tops be much smoother so on pure candle supplies they say around the 45 but I personally found 43 works really really well uh, with pouring it so we're just going to try and pour it um, at that and see how it goes so it's looking beautiful if you want to add color i would add the color straight away when you put it in the jug before waiting for it to cool down especially if you're adding uh, wax blocks or something like that now it's really important to remember that this is a coconut soy so it does have soy in it and you know with things like that remember you're always going to get frosting you know you're going to have the ashy horrible ashy kind of look on top of it so if you're doing a color you will often notice a bit of that horrible kind of um you know messy kind of look so it's you know you're never going to get that bold bright color with no you know no frosting on it unless you put a paraffin in it the ones that are bright usually have at least 10 percent paraffin i don't use any paraffins at all so i won't be putting that in any of mine if it frosts it frosts that's life but the lower the temperature that you put it in the silicon mold usually that will result in the best results um, 
for less frosting. Now I'll show you one that I made and he broke. So if you can see him here, um, this one has a brown and you can see there's really very no frosting at all. And the reason is I have poured this at about 41 degrees into the silicon mold. So that is really important to try and, you know, pour it as low as you can um, because it makes it, you know, like I said, frost less. But of course he's lost his leg, so he's no good. We need to make another one. So today I'll also show you how you can actually, um, you know, sort of wiggle the hole into, you know, whatever element you're going to use. So then we can put the wick through the element as well, which the element means, you know, um, this. So I'll show you how to put the hole through the center of it. And um, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can actually do it, you know, when you're... Um, molding it into these but then it usually means that you sort of ruin the silicon a bit because you can put like a chopstick through it but personally I don't do that uh, what I actually do is just pour them in there and then I'll wiggle a little a thin stick or a toothpick through it just to try and um, make the hole later but we'll go through that and I'll show you it is tricky you it's better to have them about you know almost a centimeter wide you, you know the mold to do that but like I said, we've done that. So now let's just go and check to see how um, this is going. I'm just going to get the infrared thermometer on here. And let me just double check how it's going. Still a bit hot, still 45. So that's okay. So I'm going to bring you back in a few minutes and then we will get this one going. So while we're waiting for that, I thought I would show you. So this is my little candle that we're testing here at the moment. This is uh, a tobacco kind of scent. Um, I'm actually testing this one just because I really wanted to see how it's going to go. This one does have a color in it. So this is the brown that you've seen me with a little gingerbread man before. So I thought we'll just test this and see. This has been going maybe half an hour now, uh, maybe a little bit longer, maybe 40 minutes. But like I said, we're just going to see how this one goes this is the wick that was suggested to use on it uh, I did try the one under it and it really it kind of didn't really make the melt pool so I thought that one's no good let's just try this bigger one and I'm um, I think this one's pretty good um, it's not too high at all you know it's maybe a centimeter so um, it probably looks bigger on screen but it's not that big but anyway so that's for the test one always test each scent as you go along uh, if you don't then you'll get customers complaining because it won't work or something will happen now I thought I would bring you back to show you so now let's just look in here can you see how this looks it looks um, almost like opaque it's not clear like wax kind of is like you know wax looks like more of a, a liquidy where this is getting thick now this is the time to pour everybody um, and that's what I sort of wanted to show everybody that it's definitely the right time to pour you um, we don't want this to um, get too thick but we don't want it too thin because otherwise it will get a messy top and this will leave a beautiful smooth top so let's just pop this one on the scale you'll see here i have it on the scale and now we're just going to make sure give this a little bit more of a mix and i'm going to tear out my scale um although my so there you go we've torn out the scale this one has to be 210 so i'm just going to pour this in i'll fix the wick thing up in a minute if it's not centered don't worry about that too much and just slowly pour it in don't try and rush too much and then you will see it's going to be beautiful once it's all done all right so that's 210 and let's just have a bit of a look and you'll see that's kind of to the top so you can see it's already an opaque type color so i'm going to get going and do the rest of these ones so let's just take this one off and i do have a few of those even though i forgot to put the wick stickers on before so that was no good was it i better hurry myself up and get these on so that it works 
and uh, I'm sorry I forgot about that because I was too busy talking. I mean, I'm hopeless sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, hopefully you you all feel like you're learning something watching my channel. And as I tell everyone, honestly, I don't know everything, you know. I've taught myself so much along the way and you just learn, you really do. Um, but, you know, it's fun. It should be fun. So I, I really hope you all find everything that I'm showing you fun and I hope you are all having a good time, you know, making all of your things and just really enjoying making them because, you know, if you don't enjoy it, it's not going to turn out that good. You know, usually you can tell if someone's not enjoying it, then they're just trying to rush it. Uh, and I know when I'm stressed trying to get them done, um, sometimes it works out a bit disastrous because <laughs> then I'm like, I feel like I'm under pressure, you know. So I'm going to get going with these other ones and I will bring you back in just a moment. Now I thought I would show you everyone, these ones are still drying. They're still soft to the touch but if you can see how um, beautiful the tops are, see how smooth they are and that's because I poured them at the lowest a temperature that I could pour them at and that is really really important because if you don't do that um, then of course you know you're going to get the messy tops and you need to do so much work to fix them up. But anyway, I will show you when they're totally ready and we will get up to the next bit, putting the gorgeous gingerbread man on. All right, everybody, we are going to be making our candles and finishing them off. So they're looking beautiful. This is one I've done to show you. So this is how you can put a little gingerbread man in the middle. If you want to do a Christmassy one, I've used just this um, particular silicon mold, which is super cute. And so now here we do have our little gingerbread man here, and I'm going to just zoom in a bit. All right, so you can see here's our little gingerbread man. Now, all we're going to do is get a kebab stick. I've already been doing one on the end, so you can see, you'll be able to see it in a minute. So now we're just going to pop it into his tummy. And hopefully, I'm just going to make sure that I'm on screen. It's a bit tricky. And all you're going to do is uh, just continuously, very gently... Um, just keep twisting the kebab stick till you get to the other end. Now don't put these in the freezer or anything like that because they'll be too cold. Just leave them at room temperature. Don't heat them up, nothing like that. And then we're just going to wiggle. Now the one thing I can, the one bit of advice I'll give you is um, don't sort of um, make your gingerbread man too dark because if it's warm then this colour is going to melt into the white. I made that mistake by putting like a red strawberry on one once and then the sun got into it and it just looked disastrous. Um, so anyway and so now you can see, if you can see, you can see my terrible nails there but anyway um you'll be able to see here now the stick's gone to the end and then we're just going to wiggle it around a little bit back and forward until we get to the right um, shape so then there's the hole there but you know do remember some wicks are thicker so sometimes you might need to just go around and sort of wiggle around the outside to make it wider and we will now just test it before we heat it up um, and you got to be really gentle like if you're not gentle it won't um, work so now this is just a little bit too um, thin so let's just you know wiggle around the outside uh, and these are super thick wicks um, these ones that I'm using and then hold, basically once you've done it we're going to heat the candle up so that he sticks to the candle um, so I can see he's going to fit in there that's fine and you don't want it too loose you want him to fit tight so now so let's just move this up a bit all right so let's heat this up and I definitely should not have cut the wick and I did but the, uh, I'm just trying to show you basically and now we're going to wiggle him on here hopefully he fits God, come on, dickhead. All right, let's go again. I had to do a few runs of this one because I didn't make the hole big enough in his tummy. So you just want to make it a little bit bigger. And of course, you can see that the wick is too small because I cut it too small. But I wanted to show you, and there we go. Here, There he is. He's on there now. So basically, 
that's basically what you're going to do and then the wick thing is just going to sit and of course move him however you want him to sit um, he doesn't need to sit perfect but that's it now everybody and doesn't he look cute I actually did put some biodegradable glitter on and I've just got it in like this little sort of pumpy bottle so we'll just pop a bit on and you put a tiny bit on because um, wax doesn't like too much and it's a biodegradable glitter now he is looking beautiful so that is the front of the jar and then that's what people will see I hope you love this video everyone make sure you give me a huge thumbs up and I will see you on the next video bye everyone